Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of uh, Freediving Tribe. Um, today is uh, world champion, five times world champion, Natalia uh, Jar Z Zarkova. Yeah. Zarkova. Um, and obviously we are in a special place today, uh, we are at Deep Dive Dubai. So, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me here. Also, thank you Deep Dive Dubai for letting us do the interview here. Um, it's really a fun place, but we are getting to this later. And so, thanks for pu uh, putting up your creativity. <laughs> so it's pleasure, pleasure. Um, yeah, tell the viewers something about you. I think not everybody knows you. Um, this year you've been not at the World Championship. Uh, participating, so tell our new viewers, the viewers who are new into free diving, a little bit about yourself. Quick introduction. Yeah. Hi, um, so as Daniel mentioned, my name is Natalia. Uh, I'm Ukrainian and um, I'm um, more of uh, athlete free diver, at least used to be, mm, till last year. Uh, um, I dedicated my free diving to athletic performance. I uh, managed to uh, set a few world records and uh, last year, sorry, this year, I uh, decided to take a break from competition and dedicate myself to another part of free diving, uh, being an uh, organizer, more of an instructor. I've been teaching before, but never so focused on this side of things and as I am now and now. My daily life is deep dive Dubai and free divers of the Middle East, um, guests from other countries around the world, and um, yeah, that's that's basically my book portrait. <laughs> okay, how did you end up? How did you became actually a free diver? So, what is like your way into the free diving world? And maybe if you have like a sport background, like what is your sport background? Uh, yeah, that's th those two things are directly linked. I um, I used to be a swimmer, um, was a part of a national team in Ukraine, and somewhere in the age of 17 years old, I quit my national team and I took a break of a couple of years. But then, apparently, the competitive nature took over, and as soon as I saw weird people with black suits, long fence, doing something odd at the bottom of the pool where I was working part-time as a lifeguard. Where was it? <laughs> it was Which? in Kharkiv. It was in Ukraine, in yep. Kharkiv. Um, I, asked, like, I was curious, what are they doing? And uh, then the instructor of that group introduced me to the long fence and somehow allured me into freediving that like for a while being, I wasn't even sure like I didn't even know that I'm doing free diving, so like I didn't, I don't have that romantic story. Like I watched the Big Blue, or I wanted to swim with dolphins all my life, or I dreamed to be a mermaid. No, it wasn't my case. It's just we had this already a couple of times, so it's uh, refreshing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, I just put the long fins on, and uh, we felt great, and the breath hold was coming natural, like more or less naturally, I would say. Uh, also quite classy, that static was my least favorite thing in the beginning. Uh, yeah, because as for a swimmer, you gotta be doing something when you're in the water, why are you just like, doing nothing? Uh, the, that was the biggest challenge, but as soon as I cracked that, everything became more fluent and up to 2013, I believe, I was more of a pool freediver because I was also more based in Ukraine training in the pool, occasionally going uh, to Egypt, to the hub for deep training, and then at some point I switched completely until last year. Now I'm a pool diver again, but different kind of pool. <laughs> Obviously, okay. Mm -hmm. So you, at one certain point, you switched to, to devs. Um, what is like your, your favorite dif discipline now? I mean, is it devs, some constant weight, for example, or is it maybe still even pool? Um, 
to be honest, like right now I'm like I'm loving constant weight biofence dives, and uh, that's that was the love from the first sight since 2017. I think that was the year when uh, this discipline was for like introduced. Mm-hmm. Officially, like, officially yeah. like as a separate uh, discipline from yeah. diving with a monofin, and I remember my first pair of fins. I called them Ferraris from Volcano. So it was like still prototypes, and like it was just amazing and unbelievable. And since then, when I discovered that bifins can be like same fast and efficient as monofin, I'm in love with that. I don't know. I'm just like. I just love the the feeling how it moves, and also it's a, it's a, like a daily basic like basis saying what I'm doing every day. Yep. I'm diving with buffins, and I love the tool. And it's it's easy to love the tool when you know how it works, right? <laughs> so, of course, of course. Um, although I'm noticing some curiosity towards static breath hold lately, maybe I will pick up that part of free diving as well. Okay. Um, about uh, constant weight bifins, uh, mm-hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, relatively soon after it was official, you also did a world record, or uh, at least a national record for sure. Uh, yeah, that was uh, my first world record. Um, but it was the same time, I it was it also was the world record. It was a na- national world record. Well, yeah, national, yeah, course, because yeah. until yeah. recently, until this year actually, I was the one, like the deepest Ukrainian freediver. Yeah. And this year, my uh, dear friend Kate uh, Sadurska, she quite quickly caught up <laughs> with the results and she was representing Ukraine in the latest world championship. When I, uh, like, I was on the break, I didn't go this year, but she probably hold our flag. <laughs> Yeah, we a couple of us we saw like you've been chatting around uh, during the the world champion uh, chip on the uh, YouTube live stream and uh, people asking like where are you, uh, what's going on, and you just mentioned like okay I have to take care of the pool, I have to keep the temperature warm enough for you guys to show up. <laughs> okay, yeah, like my my part doesn't go that far <laughs> to keep the temperature, but <laughs> definitely working on. The Setting like on uh, setting up the stage and um, how to say like to develop the place in a way so it can fit freedivers' needs in terms of um, like accommodating the times, providing like stretchy like stretching areas, you know. So it will be like kind of like our home, so we feel comfortable in here. Yeah. Uh, let's go one more time back to the to the competition. So this year was the first time like um, uh, Russia got uh, banned or Russian athletes uh, in general got banned from participating on the World Championship. Um, you obviously we don't want to get deep into political things about war, but in general spoken about the sport itself. What is your opinion on uh, on uh, banning uh, Russian athletes from from the competitions? Uh, it's a quite difficult topic for me because, uh, like, I through the years uh, I built quite deep personal connections with many of Russian athletes, and many of those were my like peers, coaches, trainers, always there like for advice. So like I feel deeply in pain for their situation. Like it's painful for me to think that like one day just somebody can take away from you the right to compete and do your thing, something what you live for, something what you invest yourself to. But um, so when it goes like towards like people and personal connections, it's a lot of pain, but I definitely can't, and like I can't imagine the picture of me or my, my friend Kate standing on the, on the podium next to Russian flag. So it's like, it's not the people, it's the state is what the flag represents these days, unfortunately. And it's like very, very painful topic for me personally, as I believe for many other people as well. Um, to be fair, it was in the first year when Russia was banned. So before, it was, they, they weren't like the people, the athletes around the world were not expelled, but they were just forbidden to use the flag. So it's been a while since um, that doping scandal. 
uh, back into Olympics, I believe. What kind of did the job, but partially, and probably won't do the job in the current situation because we still realize, we should realize that Russia as a state uses the success of its athletes towards propaganda. Many of the athletes are not like directly sponsored by the government. The government still somehow takes the credit for their success and uses it towards like building the greatness, the picture of greatness of Russia and those kind of things. But it's, it's a, there was a like the I was hesitant about this for quite a long time, but then something happened. Like Alexei dove the quickest dive to to the bottom of deep dive Dubai, which is not even a thing. Like it's like it's fun, right? But then immediately I saw in a few Russian media the Russian athlete like doves to the bottom and everything. Like they already put it as a promotion of the state. Like even though he did it on himself by himself without anybody involved in. God knows what else, how else that could be used. And um, I'm very sorry, and I don't want the friends, my friends in Russia, not even the friends, just people I know in Russia, take it personally. But I think that the that state uh, has no right to be represented in any any scene around the world right now. Okay, so you. There have been a couple of things you mentioned now, so if I understand it correctly. So in general, um, your opinion is like that the, the state, Russia itself, uh, shouldn't be allowed to promote itself in any way related to free diving. Like not, not benefit from, from some things a Russian athlete would do, and we assume, it's, assume like Russian athletes would be allowed to uh, compete um, but you would say like the Russian uh, state, the Russian government shouldn't be allowed to use this material to promote Russia in a way of celebrating it, its uh, glory or... In, uh, in a specific case, yes, it's about free diving, but that goes towards any other sports, any other... Um, yeah, we are talking just about free diving. So in general, yeah. you would say for all sports, Russia, in general, the state should be just silent. Yeah. It's okay that the athletes are allowed to compete, and uh, because uh, yeah, they are the the ones who can't, uh, who are not really involved in all these things. So it's a hard, it's a hard like it's it's very hard like thing to talk about and to think about. But if like there are ways how you can avoid it, like you can you can uh, even like get the asylum. I don't know, like go to another country, like change like. I don't know, if you don't support what's happening, then don't support it. No, but I think this part is not so easy for everyone just to change the well, passport. I'm, I'm like saying, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I understand it's, it's, it's very complicated and hard. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's also, I mean, it's, it's also odd when people expect you to act anyhow differently. Like when people, people like I received like few hate messages like in uh, in my Instagram like after I made the post with pretty much same content when I just shared like pretty much same message and I received a couple of hate messages saying that like you know you're going against the certain people and but no like that's not true like yeah understood I was also surprised from the free diving community when I saw either vote uh, should Russian athletes be banned or not allowed to compete mm -hmm. in the competitions. I was surprised that there was a higher vote uh, really like banning them and uh, not allowing them to, to participate when you always hear like we are a big family. But obviously there was, and that's my opinion, there was I believe for some like the chance okay we can get him from the podium and I'm just saying him from the podium so it's a nice chance for some others yes, um, for sure. that's what it felt for me yes for sure and unfortunately probably probably unfortunately for this case uh, removing Russian athletes from competition also mean to remove strong people and that is also part of um, 
like what, what part of the problem because it is and like it's not fair like the, the Alexei himself, uh, like Andrei, like so some uh, Russian athletes, they made such a big impact on free diving, on the sport in general. Of course. They just like. Especially. It's just. Yes. It's like it feels like there is like it's so hard to determine what's right or wrong in this. It's hard to compare how I'm doing it now because it is much much different. But imagine in, in football you would uh, take. Uh, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo out or Messi out and uh, yeah then say like okay um, let's go on and we just ban him um, it's one of the, the icons in, in our sport I believe and yeah. uh, removing him had maybe even an, a bigger impact um, than just uh, um, uh, for competition and even maybe even for the sport that he's not present and um, I think the, the most I mean, maybe not the most, but one of the ideas what I had regarding the situation, and I think that could work potentially if we would just remove just like all the flags. Like, uh, it's not possible for Siemens competition because of how it's structured, but I believe for Ida that would be possible. We just all eliminate the nationalities, just like let people compete, and because. Free divers claim that it's like we're free diving for free diving, we're not free diving for the state. Okay, then like just remove the state. But that also means that some people will not get national records, right? Exactly, and there we are at the end. But if we're a family, we're sacrificing something for some for the common good. But how do you fund your athletes as a country, um, and at the end getting no result because the result is a global result? So it's it's the same with normal sponsoring on a. If you, for example, uh, wearing a motion of suit and then uh, just remove everything and, and um, it's like a plain suit, nobody will, will see your wearing motion of, means maybe less sales and it can be any other brand, so it's not sponsored by the way. Um, and um, you know what I mean? So I understand your, your idea is, about it, is, your concept. Uh, I think what you're saying is that like if, we, if the flags will be removed from competition at once, it will also decrease the potential of the sport. I believe, I would believe so, yeah, apparently. Well, look at the uh, Mexican wrestling, <laughs> quite a show. Like, let's all dress up in the capes, get the catchy nicknames and just show up there and saying, like, I'm representing myself, that's what I can do, I'm diving in style, I'm not diving for a national record. Yeah, yeah. And then you compete not for a national record, and then we also cut the uh, those national records. I'm sorry to say, I don't mean to offend anybody, but like we all know and aware of situation when somebody dies, does like a dive of like within the recreational limits, and that counts as a national record just because this guy from this country done it first time in a row. Yeah. Okay, that yeah. is not there anymore. You just like you're celebrating first like top five athletes in the competition. Let's it's say. Like my favorite in uh, Kamini. This goes out to you. <laughs> he's from Liechtenstein, mm -hmm. and he's the only one. So every time he does <laughs> on the competition a PB, <laughs> huh, it's another national record. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably going to be a mean joke, but I thought maybe let's contact Russian athletes with ideas on where to apply for citizenship. <laughs> okay. Um, in uh, general, removing the flags, um, there could be something which would also take off some pressure, like we had in Ida with um, the Taiwanese. Taiwan and China, and yeah. Of course. So, yeah, maybe it's a thing we, we should think about a little. Uh, a little bit more. Yeah, no yeah. politics, no politics. No, as long as the country is involved, there will be politics. Of course, yeah. So let's jump into the fun part. Uh, yeah. You are yeah. the one who is responsible, is it correct to say, like for free diving in, in uh, deep dive yeah. Dubai? Yeah. So okay. I've been uh, lucky enough, fortunate enough to, to spend now, I think, two sessions with you already in the pool. And it's a huge playground, uh, I can say. It's amazing. It's uh, many of at least uh, the close friends I know, they <laughs> told me like it's more like a ghost town. It looks like a ghost town. It looks a bit creepy. And no, it doesn't. And to be honest, like out of, out of all three divers who came visit her here, I think only Alexei himself explored the, the playground more than you did. So yeah, we 
there's something called donuts. We have uh, more. Nothing sugary <laughs> in there, but uh, yeah, quite a fun part. Maybe you can show this. Yeah, uh, um, I think we can uh, put in some some uh, pictures about the donuts. Mm -hmm. So it's more or less like because it's a cylinder and uh, around it there are some caves to explore. Let's yeah. put it that way. Open uh, and spaces, there are quite and dark and creepy. Yeah, and you gotta be like levels. really comfortable. Mm -hmm. Different Very levels. Good. I think the deepest one we still need to explore is uh, 40 meters. 40 meter. Yeah. yeah. So it's 40 so meter overhead space and. Uh, I think you had a chance to feel it today yourself that yeah. just diving into overhead at 30 meters is not the same just diving at 30 meter of and course. come back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. So you should be like really confident, a 60 meter diver with a dive time over two minutes to get a chance to sneak back into it. Yeah, I think also to, to enjoy it, to yep. what you should how yeah, you should yeah, enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, because if you just swim through in the stress, <laughs> it means nothing because you don't see what's happening around. So, I, I've been, and many of the viewers most likely also been to Y40, which was the first, uh, let's say, big um, uh, um, deep dive pool, and then we had in uh, Basel. The first one was Nemo 33. I know, but it's 40 meter and not 3D, ah, and also Nemo, no, no, <laughs> but Nemo was very, very much restricted, and I think it still mm. is, uh, getting access, and Y40 was completely open for everyone, and then uh, we had uh, Deep Sport in Basel, and now is uh, Deep Dive Dubai since last year, September? Yep. Or? Uh, we open for public July 28, 2022, if I'm not mistaken. 2021, sorry. What year is it now? <laughs> 2021, yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, 60 meter deep and it's huge. How many liters we have, do you know? 14 million gallons, I believe. Okay, yeah. okay. We, we double check. Um, mm -hmm. We will, um, yeah, tell us also about a little bit about the facility. Um, like, um, of course, we are in Dubai, everything is maybe a little bit more luxury or the standard is a little bit higher, which you can right, see right. and feel everywhere. Um, I, will, I will show some, some uh, pictures or some videos about it. Um, tell us a little bit what you think about the pool, like uh, so, facility like yeah. and of course inside the pool. Uh, so the facility is quite, um, I would call it like cozy. Yeah, so um, with the, the charm when you get inside, you feel uh, a little bit like um, being in the Stanley Kubrick Space Odyssey. I remember that was my first <laughs> like feeling, first vibe when I got here, even before the official opening. When yeah. you travel these corridors with white walls and everything is like you know, odd, a little bit odd shapes, but like good odd and uh, mystic lights and then these huge windows over the facility where you like you can see the water so it's not just like a pipe somewhere there where it goes down, like you can um, see pretty much everything, like today, like right now there are no divers but it's quite a lot of fun when you have scuba divers with bubbles and uh, you're just watching it like like as you would have a mountain view right on your yeah. Somerville or something yeah. like that. So yeah, uh, I did dive in Y40 before. I haven't visited other deep pools around the world. Uh, our, our facility is slightly colder uh, than uh, Y40, what I know some would appreciate because like, even for myself, I remember Y40 was like a little bit too much. Um, yeah, so water is warm. 30 degrees. 30, 30 degrees. It's although like not the same 30 degrees as you would feel it in the sea when you're under the sun and like direct sunlight, because here is 30 degrees water, but then uh, is air conditioned space. Um, to give a recommendation, if some of you guys who watch it decide to come, uh, two millimeter wetsuit. Like usually, like the good good thing because of very fresh, like very light water, almost no buoyancy, so you want to wear something. Uh, and it's also, as I mentioned, like not that 30 degrees like it would be under the sun. Uh, we also have those suits. That's exactly the thickness we use. Um, we have uh, 
very comfortable classrooms with huge plasmas for the courses. So we run all sorts of courses. We currently teach Ida, Molchana, Spa D, free diving courses here from zero to hero. Like really, we can provide everything from the first introduction courses towards uh, instructor courses, including all the all the required courses, like additional courses, like emergency first response and such. The big part of the facility, which is still like uh, under uh, under the process of, uh, of to, like getting ready to be launched soon, is the hyperbaric chamber. Oh, there um, will be also one. Like, I can take you there, like to to see that. Uh, All right. So it's like kind of one, uh, like luxury again, as you mentioned, Dubai. <laughs> so it's like a luxury standard uh, hyperbaric chamber where you have like. Um, executive chairs inside with the music, with the toilet, with the, like something like play. Like so can we get on the next session at Taravana maybe? So we can <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Better not. It's like, um, yeah. So that is about to to be launched, and there is a facility like there. There, like we have. Oh, a bunch of stuff to measure your capacities from respiratory volumes to VO2 max, the, the treadmill, like big capacity. Uh, but we're taking like smaller steps, making sure that everything works. So after one year, I can tell that now we kind of more comfortable and we have better understanding about how free diving should look in this facility, how it works. We're looking forward to uh, collaborate with the uh, free diving clubs around the world, letting qualified instructors to send uh, free divers or come with their own groups. So that's like really up, would be up to you. Every case uh, would be considered individually. Uh, so please welcome, contact me. Um, if you don't have my personal contact, we will put it in, at <laughs> yeah, the end maybe. anyway in the uh, description and the link, the yeah. links below. Um, you um, told me that uh, more or less uh, the people can just show up without any gear. There's always That's rental correct, gear, yeah. and the rental gear is included. Or yeah, we do include. So once you pay the price, we don't charge you anything extra except, I'm sorry, video. Like if you if you want to like edited video from yeah. the pool and such, that would be extra. But everything else is included, like all the gear from uh, basic to advanced like monofins you don't need to carry that around with you like monofins nose clips masks wetsuits lanyards fins everything. everything and mm -hmm. that's like uh, high quality uh, carbon fins uh, mulchanovs uh, fiberglass monofins also have training fins well, but barely use them because we have higher quality stuff so yeah, I would say you would be completely covered. Like, if, should you decide to jump to over pool somewhere on a layover on your trip to Asia or something like that? Because Dubai is a big hub yeah. for those connections. Uh, I absolutely can recommend you if you have the time. And yeah, it's not cheap to be honest, but it's again Dubai, um, but it's worth it. So. Uh, if you want to discover uh, a nice, a really nice playground for, for free divers, then that's for sure the place to come. And uh, yeah, you will be here, you will guide them, and uh, it's going to be a fun, fun time you're going to guys have. Yeah. Yep. Also, want to just uh, make uh, make a note about the pricing that yeah, definitely is not cheap comparing to other deep pools around the world. Uh, but also, I mean. This is um, a place where you have all those like benefits of rental equipment and such. And yeah, maybe it's not always the place where you want to travel for a week of training, but probably it's the place where you want to consider to come for a course, because in the especially if you're somewhere in the, in the region, more or less. Uh, because here in the region in the Middle East, there are not so many spots with available depth and with stable weather conditions and yep. that's what like after cancel like few cancellations of training sessions you would start to appreciate the stability of the pool environment and the transparency of this water so if guys if uh, some of you guys who are watching this are in middle east uh, consider us as your as your base uh, get in touch um, we are open 
for collaborations and different kind of um, solutions, courses, trainings. We are looking forward to support national teams because, for example, Saudi Arabia, uh, I believe it was the first time for them this year to represent the national team. And one of their guys, uh, Fahad, he actually trained with us. He touched the bottom. He's like one of the first people to touch the bottom of Deep Dive Dubai. You are person number seven, I believe. Seven, okay. <laughs> Top ten is still open. <laughs> yeah. Run, 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 get your ticket. No. <laughs> yeah, so... You mentioned, it, that's us. you mentioned the water, like the water quality, I can tell like the water feels soft. So mm -hmm. I know there's like a extra you're using to, to get this kind of... of we don't like use chlorine, uh, there, is, uh, there is no chlorine, there is no extra smell or anything, the water is very pleasant. Um, and the it's filter system? Huh? And the filter system is the also filter is, Yeah, the filter system is very pleasant and um, something like they use in NASA spaceships or something, something that's like a point of <laughs> uh, mar reference. marketing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so water feels very, very nice and uh, it uses a like, complicated system. So I even remember first time, like first dives I've done here. I couldn't get the proper amplitude with my biofins because it just felt like so soft, like almost in the air. But uh, after like three, four dives, you start to adjust. Uh, and it's a good training for deeper dives because I remember once I got back to the sea, I was like nothing. Like when you when you swim in the sea, it feels like you're just running. Okay. Okay, good point. <laughs> good point, yeah, good indeed. Um, I have one question from one of our um, freediving tribe members, um, okay. Kaluna freediving tribe members. Um, Ahmed would love to know, normally, you told me now you're out of, or us out of uh, the competition right now, but normally if you prepare, what's like your way of base training? Um, and also he wanted to know like what is your diet if you have a specific diet plan when you are fully in beast mode and uh, preparing yourself for, for the next big competition get a pen write it down Where is it? red wine sausage <laughs> and Swiss cheese I think Alenka also goes with a lot of wine yeah. so yeah. No, okay. like, if to be serious <laughs> a little bit more serious about it it's um so my base training actually always has been uh, like shallower dives with uh, with other free divers when I teach courses. So my the, the way I lived my life till now was uh, staying at the shore uh, of uh, Red Sea in the hub, and I would teach courses, and sometimes I would have like three sessions per day, four sessions per day, and uh, just a lot of repetitive shallower dives. And that's what I believe works better than, uh, let's say, doing like four dives to 60 meters per day. That's um, like for conditioning is like a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, so that aerobic, like aerobic exercises, like jogging, swimming, like some kind of that stuff, just like being in general in better physical shape. I definitely do not, like cannot recommend, I won't say don't do it because people are different and it's like very personal case, like case to case. But for myself, I never ch I've chosen uh, weightlifting because like I don't, I don't feel it beneficial for free diving. My favorite conditioning is uh, TRX actually. So like okay. body, so something where you work with your body in the balance where all your body is connected together because that's the way how you're going to use it in free diving. You're not like you don't need like strong biceps or like quadriceps or anything. You, you, you need to control your body and be in balance and just feel it. Just make it the whole piece yep. where you can understand how it works. Yeah, so that would, based on my experience, that what I would suggest like shallow, like a lot of like a lot of shallow dives, good recovery. Uh, about the diet, just good food, like rich with micro elements. Um, I'm uh, also a believer for benefit of uh, sport nutrition, like amino acids, like those kind of things. I, I do believe they work. They work for me at least. Mm -hmm. Again, you never know. <laughs> like if I would not take them, like uh, how they would uh, feel, but I did. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's 
pretty much it. And then maybe a month before the actual competition, I would start attempting deep dives time to time. See how that goes. Okay. That's there you have your answer, Ahmed. Hi, Ahmed. <laughs> and um, yeah, the two last questions um, I would like to ask you are sure. the ones sure. we're going to ask or yeah, we're going to ask everyone. So first is if you could name three of your favorite places in freediving. Like can be for recreation freediving, can be for competition, like your three top places for freediving. What would you say? I would say deep dive Dubai. <laughs> of course. <laughs> then it would be Kash. I absolutely Kash? adore okay. yeah, Kash. The sea there feels like alive. I don't know. It's, just, it's very different. Uh, well, and Blue Hole because it's been my home for for many years. The Blue Hole in the Hub. In the Hub, yeah. yeah. It's been my home for many years, and the arch is beautiful and feels very cozy in there. <laughs> Wasn't it you who actually went through the arch? One of those people, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's not so many, yeah? Well, depends. <laughs> like, uh, I know there are a few people who done it with variable weight or like assisted somehow. Yeah. Uh, but you I, did without, I right? did with monofin, yeah. yeah. Impressive, okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, and the last question would be, um, what is your favorite moment in your freediving? Not saying career, but let's say in freediving for you. Like, can be <laughs> competition-wise, can be a world record, can be recreational, can be a training session here because, I don't know, um, a special person showed up and you've been working with him or her whatsoever. Can be everything. Do you have well, a... I, I need, to, like, I should confess here that, like, I don't have much of freediving experience outside of competition. Like, in that terms, okay. I'm quite, like boring person because like give me a line give me a deep spot and like i'll be busy like i'll keep myself busy for another year or two you know <laughs> uh but so, like, you, should, you should join us next time on a free diving liverboard trip yes i'm really really looking for those kind of things and i'm like now when i took a break from competition i'm looking to like discover yeah, more come with us like, to Galapagos. yeah thank you maybe yeah <laughs> um yeah so like so my favorite moment would be from the competition and that is uh, the dive of a hundred meter, well, my first hundred meter dive like ever. You did in a competition? I did a competition, yeah. I tend to add a meter or two from my uh, uh, training performance, which I do not recommend to do <laughs> unless you're absolutely sure that works for you. I just know like my uh, psychology, I'm like more focused and it's easier for me actually when it's a competition setup than when it's a uh, training setup because I'm tending to be lazy in the, competi in, the, in the training and then the competition comes, I'm like, sure. <laughs> but you could also argue it's more safer because like the people will be on the well, spot. in true. Terms of yeah, also so true. Because also you gives you a, setup. an extra... Uh, um, how you say like confidence uh, exactly yeah yeah so the special thing about that 100 meter dive was that i got narked like i got narked <laughs> like where is like it was a nice narcosis um it wasn't my first one the first the very first uh, narked experience i had uh experience of being narked i had when i was hitting 90 meters and i think it took me like three dives to overcome it because the first one I just remember surfacing in blue hole and uh, there were divers apparently and I saw these like light um, like rays of sunlight going through the water and bubbles and I was like hey I'm in the space and I was like, sort of playing with it or enjoying it and then like I remember the blue sky and then I got up <laughs> so I made it to the surface yeah. but I just like haven't resumed breathing I was still like so knocked and uh, my dive time was like 40 seconds longer and I'm like I don't know what happened and then the second time the story uh, repeated itself and I'm like huh probably I'm getting knocked so it took me two dives to realize what's actually happening so in the third dive I already knew to focus and whatever it feels like don't let myself to relax so basically did the same for a 100 meter dive, but somehow that 100 meter dive felt like so much longer. And I really remember my mind splitting like 
angel and devil one was telling me like it's so nice here so pleasant have a look around stay a little longer yeah yeah and another one will be a swim bitch like i don't know if you need to <laughs> beep that or not but that's exactly exact words i was uh, telling myself even in english like <laughs> so i made it to the surface and i still have that footage somewhere where you, like i can see myself like you know from the like why eyes wide open like i'm actually focusing on something and I'm, whoa it's like a nice trip okay <laughs> yeah. tripping tripping um i always been saying that free dive like it's worth getting deep for narcosis because it's like a legal <laughs> legal drug okay so <laughs> and because of the trip it's your most favorite dive Yes. Or also yes, because was, it was your record and the first time hitting hundred. To be honest, no, it was, it was more, more because it was like so creepy, <laughs> <laughs> it's so intense. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then, yeah, I would love to say thank you for the interview. Mm-hmm. Thank um, you for talking to me and of course making this happen. And uh, for you, I will uh, put the links in the description below. Don't forget to follow uh, Natalia and also don't forget to follow Deep Spot. A uh, deep spot? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, deep dive Dubai. Now we need to cut this. <laughs> <laughs> deep dive Dubai, of course. No, deep spot. Okay, you can also follow, but <laughs> this is deep dive Dubai. Um, yeah, and um, with this being said, um, we are out. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.